Okay, brain police. I, I recorded a video to reply earlier and I got lost, but anyway, some of the subtlety of having a fresh in my mind might might be lost, but the basic thing is this. Okay. It does not matter what people think when there is a logical contradiction involved, right? So if people or or just or for that matter anything uh, that you can establish empirically or otherwise, you know, an individual can judge. And so I, I understand the um, principle of relativity and the idea that there are no absolutes. So now these moral relativists, which are nihilists, uh, that have called themselves relativists, do so for a very straightforward reason. They're nihilists. They have no arguments because they don't believe in anything. So they have no arguments, at least, that they believe in. But the skeptical arguments being, you know, so impossible to refute, that people have tried. And you see skeptics say, keep trying, right? So that's why we're not saying they're absolutely irrefutable. Um, and they do have certain flaws and lead to certain things and can be refuted on various grounds that maybe, you know, uh, are good in certain situations. But anyway, they know that the skeptical toolkit involves being able to always break an idea down into parts. So no matter what it is, you can question it, break it down into parts, find parts that are not defined and all kinds of things, work that has to be done. And they try to think that induction, that inductively this means that they can break them down to nothing eventually. But that's not a skeptical principle. Okay, and that's not a natural uh, philosophical principle that you find in nature. Because in nature, you know, you don't break lines or into points, you break them into segments. You break it in half, you have two halves. You break it again, you have quarters and so on and so forth. You never get z the zeroth parts. You get one to the Google, you know, one over two to the Google. Not nothing. Okay, and as I said before, uh, relativity is about, you know, relationships. How are you going to say that this isolates us into a world where we can't compare things? No, that's the, relativity means you have to compare things, right? You have to compare things, okay? That, you know, you, you're comparing them and you have a criteria, like the criteria has to do with their spatial location and, and the relationship is relative velocity. Okay. So anyway, now the dogmatic absolutists, objectivists, of which nihilists are, are sort, right? They believe in this one thing that, that certain, you know, nihilism. Um, they're happy to let these nihilists call themselves skeptics because they've never come up with an argument against skepticism either. Their only argument then that they did come up with, you know, okay, yeah, they came up with one, is that the skeptics are nihilists and, and living like a nihilist sucks. It's much better to, to embrace something in your life. But the Pyrrhonists always said you embrace what appears to be the case. They just said you keep investigating it. Hello? Sounds scientific. Okay. So, obviously, you can judge from within a skeptical epistemology in the sense that science judges. Okay, it doesn't make a final judgment, but it does say, well, we can compare two systems, Ptolemy's system and uh, the Newtonian or Keplerian system. Why is one better than the other? Okay, at first, the Ptolemaic system still was more accurate. But the reason the, the Keplerian and Newtonian system is better is because things like momentum are conserved. If you pretend that, you know, the system isn't revolving around its center of mass, but around the Earth, then you, you have problems with things that are useful to, to be able to define. You want to be able to define uh, a kind of momentum where the momentum is conserved. Right? It doesn't depend on the time of year on Earth. On Earth. <laughs> so you'll have a lot easier calculations in fact some calculations might not even be doable if you get the math so wrong that you can't do the right kind of formula um, that can be calculated okay 
So I, I think that, um, you know, there's no way I'm going to give in to, like, the consensus of, oh, but some people have used this way and people are concerned. Yes, they're concerned about a thing called nihilism. It has a name, a very clear name. The word itself, you know, reflects the meaning of the name nihilism. They believe in nothing. The skeptics have never been that way. Now, the academic skeptics are kind of the nihilistic ones. But guess what? You go to the academy, you know, where the, their name comes from, and many of them, no, they agreed with the Piro, who was unequivocally... Uh, believed in, of course you ascend to appearance. You, in other words, you go with the evidence. That's what we all do. You go with the evidence. And um, so, I mean, it's it's not like it's some um, people are so scared of this crazy thing. No, I mean the the real meaning and the meaning it's meant to the people, you know, it, advocating it has been clear for thousands of years. Oh, what's the problem? Oh, the problem is institutions like churches demonizing those people and academic philosophy demonizing those people because they had no logical argument to refute the epistemology and all they could say is, well, you can't live that way, you'll never take a drink of water because you're not even sure it's there. And yet here we go drinking water with, with skeptical and relativistic explanations of why we do these things. But I'm supposed to give in to this cabal between the nihilists and the dogmatists? Of course not. You know, and I would like to point out that from a skeptical vantage, you can even talk about why those are advantageous, why a dogma might help someone. You know, if you're in a hard situation, a pioneering kind of situation, it might be good to have some rigid beliefs because flexibility will make you too weak against your environment. Nihilism. Nihilism is great when you have a dogma and you want to break it down. You, you, you go towards nihilism and, and, and belief in nothing. You tell yourself you're willing to believe in nothing. You know why? Because that's what it feels like when you give up your dogma. It feels like you're about to believe in nothing. But what really happens is you form new opinions. Often the problem is they reform a lot like the opinions you were trying to get rid of. And that's a reason to keep being nihilist because it'll try to come back. And maybe your kids will be the ones that learn the new ideas. But eventually, skepticism is where you could do this sort of exercise, this breaking down, and realize that it's, it's all to, to, you're just scrubbing the paint off like a canvas because you want to use the canvas again. You know, and there's never, when you get the canvas totally clean, it's a lot like nothing, but not really. It's just an arbitrary zero point. It's not nothing. There's a canvas there. Okay. I might even have that other one might have successful, but I don't I don't know. I didn't see it, so I had a fresh thought on it. I might have repeated myself, but either way. Cheers.